All right. So thank you everybody um, for joining. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces. Um, and so I am going to go ahead and share my screen. I don't know why this looks absolutely completely different. There we are. There we are. All right. So welcome everyone. This is um, the Pathways to Partnership in Information session. Um, and the purpose of today is just to get some information about, to give you guys some more information about the um, series that we have coming up. Um, my name is Michelle Belanger, and I am the Pre-K Partnership Specialist on the Early Learning Team. And I do have um, Leanne, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks, Michelle. Hey, everybody. I'm Leanne Larson. I'm the Director of Early Learning in the Department of Education. And this is some other members. Um, this is our early learning team. We have uh, Marcy Wickham, who's the public pre-K consultant. Sue Gallant is the first 10 community school specialist. Julie Raymond, the pre-K expansion consultant. Nicole Medor is the early childhood specialist. Stacy McCoy is the Head Start State Collaborative Director. Karen Matthew is leading up the kindergarten inventory entry inventory specialist. And Renee Riley is our preschool development grant manager. Um, so just a couple of reminders. I am um, recording this um, and also there will be some time at the end of the session um, for any questions. Um, also feel free to put them in the chat if you so you don't forget them or or anything like that and we'll get to them. So again, the purpose of today's session is to provide an overview of the pathways to partnership four part series. So um, I will give you information about um, who can join, um, what the makeup of the community team should look like, um, the dates, not the times, um, of the sessions, um, the purpose and the setup of each session, um, some more information about the mini grant opportunity, and then we'll go ahead and take some questions. Let's see, it's right in my way. So the whole purpose of the series um, is about building relationships. And so through an interactive four-part series between school districts and community partners, um, we're gonna, they will have the opportunity to develop meaningful relationships. So we are gonna be helping facilitate open dialogue um, to learn and understand each other's roles, uh, the challenges and resources that each stakeholder brings to the table. Um, we're gonna talk about collaborating on shared goals. So one of the best ways to um, build relationships and start those partnerships are through shared common goals. Um, and those are definitely um, those shared outcomes for students and families. Um, is a really great place to start because I think the one thing that at the very heart of each partner of the SAU and the community partner is um, really wanting what's best to support children and families. And so um, we're gonna be talking about, um, and we're gonna explore some best practices. Um, and so that will be in the form of learning from successful partnership models and real world examples um, between schools and community providers. And there is a lot going on currently in the state. And there's a lot of great examples that uh, we can pull from and highlight for you guys to sort of get your ideas flowing about different ways to, to partner and to collaborate with each other. And then also, um, you know, we're hoping to from this all create some action plans. So each team is going to work together to develop 
um, concrete partnership strategies and action plans that they can implement within their schools and communities. And so this will be in the form of just some work groups um, that will take place during the series. So the more benefits of partnerships, um, so, you know, stronger relationships, um, building trust and establish ongoing lines of communication um, is, is essential for building effective long-term partnerships. Sharing resources, um, you know, in a time where, um, you know, resources can be taxed, um, a great way to really, you um, embrace and expand resources is by communities and SAUs, um, understanding how to pool and leverage resources, talents and expertise. Um, everybody brings their own expertise to the table and this is all to better serve students and their families. Also um, by working together, um, the goal will be to improve outcomes. Um, so, SAUs and community providers can create more holistic support systems that address both academic and social emotional needs for children and families. And overall, this series is designed to foster collaborative thinking, encourage problem solving, and ultimately build partnerships that create a more connected and supportive community for students and families. And by doing that together in partnership is how we're gonna do it. So why partnership? Um, so building these relationships with community-based providers, SAUs and families helps create a supportive network for the children in our state. Building these relationships, they lead to opportunities to partner in many ways. And this list is not inclusive. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. Um, these are just some things that sort of um, are kind of like the low hanging fruit that I'm sure we've all heard of. So public pre-K offerings, um, which would be part of a mixed delivery system. So that would be um, public pre-K in community partner sites or in partnership with community partners. Wraparound services. So that includes before and after care, um, vacation, summer. Um, snow day care, as well as if you're in, when you think of Head Start, also all of the extensive ser services that Head Start offers its children and families. Shared professional development, as I said, um, every community provider and SAU has their own expertise. And by sharing that expertise with each other, uh, we're able to really gain a better understanding of the whole child and what we need to do to support that child and families. So family engagement opportunities, community partners have a really um, great sort of leg up because on a lot of um, child cares or community partners, there's no transportation. So Usually providers are face-to-face -face with families once or twice a day um, and really have um, opportunities to build those relationships. And those trust and relationships can really be bridged with SAUs as the, and help supporting children and families as they transition to kindergarten or first grade. So kindergarten transition support as well as registration. As I said, you know, kindergarten transition is probably one of the biggest transitions that a child will go through in the early years and having a supportive network that has communicated together and has, um, you know, really teamed up to help support individual children and families in this transition is, is really key to making that successful, successful and in, in so many levels. So for the children, as well as for the SAUs to be able to begin to have an understanding of where this child and family is coming from so they can start by differentiating and individualizing curriculum or opportunities for that child and family even before they walk through the door. Curriculum and assessment alignment. 
So um, uh, some of you may be familiar with the Department of Education's um, open source curriculums, the pre-K for me, first for me, um, K for me. And so there is a lot of um, curriculum alignment that's going on and also that assessment alignment. Um, so we're thinking about whole child and what we need to do to support the whole child and family. So the community team, what is the teams made up of? So community teams will need to have at least one leadership representative from a school administrative unit or SAU. So this could be a principal, assistant principal, superintendent, curriculum coordinator, um, a, a, a team lead, and then also we'll need to have at least one representative from a licensed community provider. So um, family child care provider, center-based, Head Start, YMCA, YMCA. And although only two members are required for the team, uh, teams are strongly encouraged to have broader representation from their early care and education community. If the teams are not solidified by, by the time and you do start out with two, one of the things that we are, that we would love to do is talk about how to incorporate more representation from the community. And, um, who, you know, it might even be just a matter of finding out how to reach out to them. And so helping, helping each other um, know who to contact and who to, who to talk to. So the sessions, there are gonna be four 90 minute Zoom sessions. Uh, the dates are Thursday, October 17th, Thursday, November 7th, Thursday, December 5th, and Thursday, January 16th. The first half of the session is gonna feature a learning opportunity. And so this is gonna be sharing information through presentations and or panels um, with representatives from SAUs and community partners that are, that are partnering currently and um, really highlighting and showcasing some examples that are happening to get you thinking about what different ways to, to partner. And so we'll have many different representations on how that, what that might look like. And so one of the big things is about learning what role each stakeholder plays in the community. So um, sharing information about what community providers do in the day-to-day -day with the children and families in their care and um, being able to share that information. <clears throat> We're gonna have some discussions about partnership opportunities, the benefits. Uh, we're gonna talk about ways to overcome the barriers of partnering. And then the second half of it will include breakout sessions with your team. Um, and this will be able to, this will enable you to discuss planning opportunities for partnerships. So you can really have a concrete plan um, on activities or different ways that you can partner to, to really start laying that foundation. So the time of the sessions is gonna be determined through the registration form. Um, being mindful of providers and school districts have um, different timings, um, you know, that they, they work. So um, yeah, on the sign up form, there is a, um, an area where you can indicate the times that that will work for you. And it, we will be picking sort of the majority um, one that works for most people. <coughs> Excuse me. And then at the end of the four part series, um, we will be um, releasing a mini grant opportunity. Um, and so in order to um, be able to qualify for the mini grant, you need, do need to attend the four sessions. Um, and the mini grant is up to $8,000. And this is to support a consultant to facilitate partnership activities. And it is really meant to continue on the work that you and the community partner in the school district are doing in that second half of our series. 
And so um, that money can be to, like I said, support consultants to continue that work for, for the rest of the year to set you up for, for next year and um, help plan out some more activities. So this is um, the link to the application and I, am ha I will um, be happy to share the slideshow and the link out to everyone um, after, after the session. So I'm going to stop sharing because I can't see anyone. <laughs> Um, but, um, my email is on here. Um, if anybody has any questions in, after this session and you want to email me, my email is right there. Let's see. Yeah. Is there any questions? And thanks, Leanne. Leanne did go ahead and put um, my email into the chat for anyone who has questions. You might be able to copy and paste the registration link, Michelle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Here's that, and that's the registration link um, to the application for the, for, well, to the registration for the series. So can you remind people when the registrations are due? Um, so the, we'll, we'll be taking registrations um, right up to um, like the week of um, the Monday or Tuesday of when the first session is. So the first session is, um, oh my goodness, my calendar's off. So um, the 17th. Yes, sorry. And so it will be... Um, Tuesday the 15th is when we'll um, close registration. So that way we can have some time to, um, you know, put the teams together and make sure that everybody gets information and we can get information out to everyone or before the first session. Michelle, I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, just for clarification, so this is for um, new, this is for new partnerships, right? Programs that don't already have a pre-K or, or anything like that, correct? Right, so these yep. are from new partnership opportunities. Yep. Opportunities, right. And then, um, in, is it an application process? Like you're not taking everyone or you are, are like, is anyone who registers gonna be included or, and, and get the grant or is, how does that work? Yeah, so the um, as far as the application goes for the series itself, uh, we will be taking anyone who is interested. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, you know, depending on how many that that is, if there's like 400, we might not, we might have to tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's, um, you know, assuming that there's a, a, a reasonable number, you know, everyone, as long as they, that community team is, um, is complete, then we will go ahead and, um, and take everyone. And then the mini grant opportunity will be, we're still working that out. We haven't have, we don't have everything for that yet. Um, but okay. again, um, you know, definitely one part of that is um, the series is attendance at the series. Sure. Okay. And I guess the other thing I would say, Anne, on that is um, to answer partly answer your question is that it's not um, communities that already have a, a partnership for public pre-K are not excluded from this right. opportunity because you can work on other projects besides mm -hmm. 
just, you know, one of them could be, yeah. yes, we'd love to establish a partnership for public pre-K in our community, but maybe we want to work on building a kindergarten transition plan, or maybe we want to look at how can we do more sharing of professional learning across our early care and education mixed delivery mm -hmm. system. So there can be different purposes for why a team would come together and want to participate in the opportunity. Okay. And also the, the hope is, is that this is sort of a, you know, gateway for more partnership opportunities that there are recognizing that there are a lot of, um, community partners and SAUs that want to partner, but just don't know how to start or jumping into a public pre-K might be too much of a heavy lift. So, you know, having some other opportunities to sort of start building that relationship mm -hmm. um, before you get to, you know, a full-blown um, either public pre-K partnership or, you know, um, you know, like a, like a first 10 community um, type situation. So this is really, really geared towards um, building those relationships. Mm -hmm. Michelle, did you say a first 10 community? You well, made a reference that I didn't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. So the, the first 10 community schools oh, is, is another. Um, so Sue Gallant, who's the first 10 community school, um, is working with them. But what I was saying is that this is sort of, you know, these are the steps before any, you know, any type of all-in partnership um, is really what we're hoping to do and really start those conversations and start those relationships between um, between community partners and SAUs. The, the first time community school model is a, um, <coughs> like a community school that partners together, a, usually an elementary school with their early care and education mixed delivery system and it's called First 10 because it focuses on supporting children and families during the first 10 years of a child's life. So it really starts with work in a community from birth right up through those early elementary years. And it involves creating a leadership team, um, having a family outreach coordinator position. Um, so it takes a little bit more scaling up, but this would be a great opportunity to even explore something like that um, for the future or you could use your mini grant to dig in more deeply to that kind of a model. Any other questions? Dorothy, were you gonna say something? <laughs> Is there anything being done to facilitate uh, join, like uh, even just joining the sessions together, like both both sides, you know, math, matchmaking in a way, um, child care centers that are interested with schools that are interested that may not have already, may not, all, may not even know who they are or how to sort of reach out in that way? Yeah, I, you know, I would... There, there's nothing really official, but I would say that, you know, if there is a question on, you know, if there's a school system or a provider who might not know who to reach out to, to definitely send me an email. And again, I would happily um, at least, you know, help with, you know, contact information on who they should be connecting with. Um, I know I was speaking with one school district and just giving them the um, child care choices website, um, which is something um, school districts don't really, it's not in their purview. So um, knowing that there's a resource like that out there was very helpful for uh, the superintendent and principal that I was talking to, just knowing that there's that to help identify um, potential partners 
that's in their area. And I think one of the reasons that we said, you know, to to apply to be a part of the series, you just need one leadership member from a school system and one licensed community provider so that at least it's starting a conversation and a relationship. No. And then you can add to that. You could certainly have more than that on your team, or maybe as part of the series, you're working to add more people together to the conversation. So it can start really small and grow, or you could start with a bigger group to begin with. Yep. Hi, Michelle. This is Christina. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Hi, Christina. Hi, sorry, I'm on the phone today because I'm on the fly, but no I guess worries. I'm on the call thinking about um, partnerships, new partnerships, as well as existing partnerships that are going to expand into new arenas, such as um, working together to support children as part of the um, Part B 619 transition to public okay. schools. Yeah. Would that come? fall under this umbrella that, that would be great Christina Absolutely. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah um, yeah so definitely you know um hopefully starting these conversations and starting to build these relationships and these connections now and um to have them start off small enough really provides the opportunity for these partnerships to grow and these relationships to get stronger and develop. And so, um, you know, when that, uh, when the 619, when the FAPE opportunity does go over to the, um, to the school districts, you know, hopefully there are some partners that they can turn to that they've built relationships with that they'll already have connections with and so when it when when they need to do that they already have an idea on who they can reach out to thank you and thanks for offering this opportunity it's really really important really needed thanks christina all right well if there's no other questions i'm gonna stop recording and